Well, howdy diddly dandy there, chums, tis I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, I've got something rather odd to talk about. So, and I, I'm imagining this might even affect you, or, or the mass majority of people. I mean, I've only managed to survey a very small swathe of people. But I'm hoping this video is going to do that extra mentally. Yeah, so if this does apply to you, get ready, hover over that like button, and hit a like if this does apply to you. But basically, we've all sort of grown up watching movies like Superman, and Dragon Ball Z, Peter Pan, and all the flight in all of those movies is fairly sort of, you know, liberating, zoom, off like a speed of a bullet type sort of situation, once they get good at it, obviously. But um, I'm not finding that inside of my lucid or dream type states. When I fly, I have to sort of push down like that and it's almost like I'm putting force bubbles underneath me or pushing chi beneath me or something and I rise up a little and then I do it again I go up a bit more and I do it again I go up a bit more it's not as free form or as liberating as that of Superman I mean at first of all he starts doing jumps doesn't he leaping and bounding and then he takes to flight you know no, I don't have that experience at all. It's not like Peter Pan using happy thoughts or anything like that. It is like I say, it's pushing down. So anyway, I was talking to one of my friends and I said, look, you know, I had a dream that I was flying the other day. And he goes, oh, I have them all the time. And I'm like, how do you fly in your dream? Is it like Spider-Man? I'm mean, Superman. And he's like, um, and I was like, is it like Peter Pan? And he's like, mm. and I was like, or is it like this? And I told him, and he's like, that's exactly how I fly. How the fudge did you know that? got home I had the same conversation with Ivy and she was like yeah that's how I fly in my dreams too it it's a struggle yeah it's almost like swimming you know like when you float on your back and you're doing those squid type movements almost like that and moving along kind of like that I mean not everybody swims like that obviously I'm a bit weird but you know it, that's how I fly now if you do if you also fly in the same sort of way hit a like but I think there's bigger ramifications to this let me just have a little sip of my tea while I put my thoughts in order. So yeah, it can't just be simple dreaming. I mean, there's different stages of dreaming. There's REMscape, which you're fully immersed. You don't know that you're dreaming. In that sort of state, yes, I have had the odd dream where I'm like Superman. I can fly wherever I want. It's quite liberating and free. The areas where I'm saying is where you're kind of in between being asleep and being awake, where you're overly tired perhaps, or you enter into what I would call an astral type state, or a stage where you know that you're dreaming and you can kind of take control of that dream. It's a very weird state, but that's where the flying gets a bit, you know, more sort of, you've got to do the force pushing type stuff. Now, if we're all having this shared experience, could it be that that realm that we're in is a shared realm? Could it be something more than just a shared realm? Could it be another sort of stage of existence? And that's where I'm putting this out there to you guys and the viewer verse, with a cup of tea in hand, <laughs> and giving you something to think about, people. What if? Now, there's other people that have done sort of experimentation into the old astral realm. They've figured out that the brain releases a chemical called DMT, is diomethotryptamine, when you dream. And that's what causes your dreams to happen. They've found that even at the point of death or brain death, massive amounts of this diomethotryptamine are released as well. So they managed to get the chemical equivalent of it. And they'd done studies on people to see if they had similar experiences and whether they experienced the same realm. They didn't really ask about flight, but they did ask about, did you see any astral beings? Did you see any other people there with you? And what did they look like? And all these people were experimented on separately and all their accounts recorded separately. But then when it was transcribed and matched up and documented, it was like, how many of these experiences were similar or the same, it was pretty undeniable that something was going on here. There was definite patterns. And I'm wondering whether there's a definite pattern to this whole flying sort of shenanigans. So if it is, you know, there are a lot of people, a lot of my friends hit me up and say, oh, I had a weird dream last night. Just say, hold on, let me stop you right there. Give them this Captain Steve video. <laughs> and say, if you want to see something about weird dreams, have a look at this. 
Yeah, I don't really like conversations about dreams because it's all airy fairy type stuff. But this is fascinating me a little, I've got to admit. So anyway, people, I'm going to say salute to Mondo. And goodbye and goodbye again. And hopefully this has given you something to ponder on. Cheery bye.